And here we start with the next match, the gold medal match in compound women. And with us is a great archer, Britt Ditton from US. Commentate, thank you, again. Thank you, Britt, for being here. And we can see the introduction of the two judges. The judges, sorry, the two archers. And I let you make the honors. Who is shooting the final? Uh, we have Charwan from Korea and Toya Karn and from Slovakia. Uh, Toya actually switched from Matthews to Hoyt as well, just like Crystal Govan did in, in the bronze medal match. So this is her first tournament with a brand new bow as well. And uh, for her to you make it to the gold medal match is pretty good. <laughs> yes. And we mentioned we heard there are several changes of top archers from one brand to another. It's competition in the companies, in the both companies, and competition is good. So we see, yes, Toya with the coach, boyfriend, supporter, Brady, Ellison. You see, he just came from the practice range to hold his quiver on. Yes, because having, <laughs> a, having a coach with a quiver, I'm not sure how much is this in our rules. <laughs> But uh, as yes, long as he there jumps are up and there are couple and for sure supporting each other. And Brandy know pretty much about compound too, so <laughs> <laughs> for sure is giving a good help in training, coaching, and how to shoot an arrow. Again, as you mentioned before, first arrow is a bit out. The lighting could be different from the practice field to the final field. Yeah, everybody's first arrow has actually been a little left. Yes. Except that's, that's happened always. That's <laughs> always when we say it, it's not happening. <laughs> that's the rule of a commentator. <laughs> you mention it, and it's just the opposite. But it's true. The first match was on the left. Most of the arrow they took them one end to to get the side right. Good, she got it. And we see Chao Won on. Korea, there's more and more Korean shooting compound and shooting pretty good. Yeah, they, uh, a lot of them have made the switch from recurve to shooting compound just to be a little more competitive, more than one aspect of the sport. So, and they've been really successful. I know during uh, the outdoor season, shooting on the men's, the USA men's team, we shot against the Koreans uh, a number of times in the team event as well as individual. And, uh, and pretty competitive. Yeah, they very they competitive switch in an incredible high level. There's no transition. They just came and compound and, and went to the top in very short time. We're talking in Marrakesh to some of the compound archers and it's clear that some years ago US in compound you were leading, you guys were in the top and now it's more and more countries going to this level. And the mention of the comment was that uh, there was so much information about how to tune the bow that many years ago you guys have much more knowledge how to tune properly a compound bow. And now more or less everybody has. So it's much more competition in compound division all around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we still see a lot of the same guys uh, near the top. I mean, uh, Rio and Braden. I think Braden earned bronze in Marrakesh earlier, just about a month ago. Um, Real wild, it shot well, regardless of when, <laughs> when it was, whether it was 10 years ago or this week. Um, so a lot of the guys are still up there. Mike, Mike Schlossner, we'll see in the men's bronze match. I guess that uh, also but this also has to do with how much experience you have to shoot in this type of events. And in US, you have so many top level events that you have so many top level archers shooting that you get used to this situation because shooting there is not the same that practicing oh, or not shooting even, at home. Not it's a completely even different close. game. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm sure you have to get used to be there very, very often to feel comfortable and like it. I so don't know that I ever feel comfortable, but I just enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy the being competitive, so and that makes it a lot more fun. So we uh, go back this later. Let's come to the match and we can see that Chai won was leading. She has Ten. two point lead right now against Toya. Two points is still not a big difference. The match is still open. We are just in the second end and Toya did a very good turn. Yeah, that was a good arrow from her. 
like I said, she just switched bows, so she's been kind of playing with her equipment a little bit. And she moved a couple things around here and there earlier in the day. Here uh, in the competition. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, with the Hoyt versus the Matthews, the Hoyt has a cam and ass system, so there's two cable stops instead of just one. And uh, she was playing around with the timing of those a little bit to try okay. and get a little different feel on the bow. Uh, just as something else you can kind of mess with on it. But it's also something else that can that can move around. But mm, anymore, everybody makes good equipment. So it was clear that the shot she was not happy. It was uh, the form was very consistent except this shot, and that gave a little bit of space to Toja to come back. Uh, depending on the arrow call and her second arrow, Toya may actually have uh, maybe tied here. We see a nine with asterisk, which means that uh, the arrow could be a nine or a ten. When we see an asterisk, the star close to the to the score means that it's too close to call. It's very close to the line. As soon as it's touching the line, it's going to the next one. And it's like they're tied. has been confirmed that it's a, a nine. We have it was not upgraded to ten. And because the, the arrow shaft is so thick and the line is so thin, you need really to go to the target to see it. And sometimes judges need to use magnifying glasses to check if it's touching or not touching the line. And that's why we have to wait for the final confirmation. So it seems that now they are tied. So Toya make her way back and the match is starting again. <laughs> Close matches are always fun to watch, but I can attest, I can attest to From say outside. that they are. <laughs> From outside. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they're not the most fun to be in. <laughs> can be a little stressful, but they are. Beautiful. I would say from commentator position of fan or when we watch, we love time matches. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Makes it a lot more interesting to to watch instead of somebody just beating Nine. the heck out of somebody else. Correct. <laughs> Nine. So I actually jumped up after the to a one point lead after the first arrow, but threw it out so they're tied again. Potentially tied. He's on the right. He's already several arrows a little bit on the right. Still on the right. Now correcting the side. She has yep. been moving a so scope a little bit, yep. but it's a pity. Three arrows on the right, mm -hmm. and that we have seen more, very often. Let's say that archers are on the right or on the left, and they are reluctant to touch <laughs> the side. Or when they correct, they make like little click, and then it's a little bit on the right and a little click, and it's a little right. It's not this confidence to make two clicks or three clicks and try to make it in. It's a bit. No. Of Sometimes just the one click is all you need, and a lot of times it's just in your head. <laughs> I the, hear that. The well. clicks on the side are so so well, fine that sometimes it doesn't move it more than a, a millimeter or two. A psychological click. <laughs> exactly. Just makes your head feel better knowing that you move your sight to compensate for that. I, I agree. The next arrow is a ten, but if yep. the three are on the right, let's say that. Right. Let's see if she corrected it going into the the fourth end here. Mm -hmm. Still tied after that end. And here in compound we have a cumulative scoring, so every arrow counts until the end. When in recurve we will go to set system, which gives you a bit chance to come back for a bad arrow. Here in compound, every arrow, every score counts. So better put them in. <laughs> Close to call. 
the other thing with the silver Easton arrows and the, the blue light. The light can reflect and it's hard, sometimes hard to tell where your arrows are. Right. <laughs> yes, that's right. When the arrows are in the black color, it's a bit easier to see. When it's a silver color, they reflect a little more light. And more <laughs> reflection and yes, not so easy to call on a target. Right. Timing is pretty good. Both archers shoot quite dynamic, quite fast. They don't stay too long aiming. There's a tendency you see for archers aiming a lot and long shooting sequence and archers shooting really fast and dynamic. What do you think about that? Uh, it depends on how your uh, what your shot cycle is. So for me, if I start speeding things up real quick, I'll I don't settle into the target the way that I should. So for me, a, a really quick shot sequence can be beneficial, but a, I want it to be quick after I'm settled in and have really started my aiming process. Uh, so for me, like my longer shots or a regular shot for me, by the time I anchor, is about 12 seconds. Uh, some guys, it's much, much shorter than that. Um, and some guys that when you shoot a team, you struggle a little bit. Uh, it's not too bad. I mean, it, It'll take me half a second to get up the line, another second or two to lo knock my arrow. So I'm still in, the, for team event, we're still in that 20 second time range for each archer. You're uh, still in, in this 20 seconds. Yep. Uh, but, I mean, here we're still the chance. We, have, we can walk up to the line, obviously, and get an arrow knocked and everything. So we're, for the uh, individual stuff, I've never too, had too much of an issue as far as. And you, you know, manage your own time, so you. you Yep, so I but mean, in a team just three archers shooting, they have to go in and out of the line and, and timing when you spend a long time to shoot, it's an issue for, for making no time. Excellent, we come back to the match. We can has see a one point lead going with three arrows to go. So she started with the first end two points behind and she came back. Tied the match and now is leading by one point. Nine. Still a bit low but not right anymore. Hers is good high, but still a 10. Up by two with two arrows to go. 10! And there, Chaiwan got a 10, but it's still a little lower. Not quite center, but still a solid 10. Nine. Toy with a nine eye, but she has an extra point to play with, so. Nine. All Toy needs is a nine to win the match. And she made it. That's perfect. She, ten. Out ten she got it. She won. <laughs> We have so that's, this is her first tournament with a brand new bow, so I guess she's undefeated with it. <laughs> Exciting match, Toya coming back Women's from the first end and winning with a fantastic 10 in the middle when she needed. Good start with a career. Shooting with, on with target Hoi. one from Korea. Chao Won Su with one four zero point and shooting on target two with one four two point. Kotya Shani from Slovenia. Gold medal for the compound woman goes to Kotya Shani from Slovenia and the silver medal goes to Chai Wu. So from Korea. Congratulations to both artists and thank you, Line Judge. And that has been the match, the gold medal match of the compound woman here in Bangkok in the second stage of the Indoor World Cup. And Toya receiving the felicitation and congratulations and the happiness of people who know, who care, or who admire her.